Roman epic, Virgil's Aeneid. On his deathbed in 19 BCE, Publius Virgilius Maro ordered his heirs to burn his work to ashes. His will was ignored, the work circulated, and became the most studied and reproduced book from antiquity, Virgil's Aeneid. The Aeneid is an epic poem concerned with the mythical foundation of Rome by the descendants of Aeneas, a Trojan prince fleeing the destruction of his city. Virgil started writing in 29 BCE after the inhumane bloodshed of the Roman civil wars, of which the author himself was a victim. Augustus's power put an end to the civil wars in 31 BCE and established unparalleled peace and prosperity while suppressing the liberties of the Roman Republic. Virgil's work legitimizes Augustus's power by linking his ancestry to Aeneas and his mother Venus. By narrating the heroic deeds of Aeneas, meanwhile, the poem reinforces the restoration of ancient Roman values typical of Augustus's reign. Wars and a man I sing, an exile driven on by fate. Tell me, O muse, how it all began. The poem begins with a statement of its theme, the destiny of the hero Aeneas and the warfare leading to Rome's foundation. The traditional invocation of the muse, a goddess of inspiration, allows Virgil to explain the story's central strife, the resentment held by the goddess Juno against the Trojan people. Aeneas's account begins in Medius Res. He flees from a Troy in flames, taking away the Penates, household gods, his son Ascanius, and on his shoulders, his father Anchises. With the surviving Trojans, he sets sails with 20 ships from Antandrus, and his wanderings begin. He then moved to Thrace, to Delos, to Crete, to Sicily, where Anchises died, and onto the coast of Africa to Queen Dido. With the complicity of divine intervention, Dido falls in love with Aeneas, who at first reciprocates her passion. Reminded by Mercury of his duty towards fate, however, Aeneas sets sails unwillingly, Italy bound, causing Dido's suicide. Landing in Italy, at Cumi, Aeneas descends to Hades, where his father's shadow foretells the destiny of Aeneas's heirs. But you, Roman, remember, rule with all your power the peoples of the earth. These will be your arts. To put your stamp on the works and ways of peace, to spare the defeated, break the proud in war. Aeneas finally arrives in Latium. Here he is welcomed by Latinus, king of the Latins, who promises him his daughter Lavinia. The princess, however, is already promised to Turnus, king of the Rutuli. Aeneas, aided by Evander, king of Palantium, then wages war against Turnus, who is assisted by the Italic princes until Aeneas kills Turnus in a duel and the epic narrative ends. For the interpretation of the poem, the Aeneid's reader must pay attention to three levels of its narrative, Aeneas's account, Roman history, and the epic tradition. An example is offered by the storm scene in Book One. At once, Aeneas, limbs limp in the chill of fear, groans and lifting both his palms toward the stars, cries out, three, Four times blessed, my comrades, lucky to die beneath the soaring walls of Troy before their parents' eyes. In this scene, Virgil presents a moment of Aeneas' despair during his perilous journey. At the same time, the tempest-tossed ships recalls the turbulent conditions of Roman politics before the pacifying rule of Augustus. Finally, the very imagery of the scene recalls Book 5 of the Odyssey, where Odysseus is presented in a very similar light. Virgil's hero exemplifies the most desirable Roman virtue of his day, pietas, roughly piety, dutiful respect. Aeneas enforces a new ethics, moving away from the simple individualism of Homer's warriors. Virgil's hero dislikes war and violent actions, but engages in them out of his faithful obedience to the will of fate. Aeneas accepts his fate as an agent of Jupiter's plan for the future prosperity of the humans under the civilizing rule of Rome. I am Aeneas, duty-bound, and known above high air of heaven by my fame. Carrying with me in my ships are gods of hearth and home, saved from the enemy. I look for Italy to be my fatherland, and my descent is from all highest Jove. As a cornerstone on the Western literary canon, the Aeneid exercised unprecedented influence on later literary traditions. Among others, Poet Dante Alighieri shaped his work on the Aeneid to the point that the Divine Comedy features Virgil as Dante's guide in his literary voyage to the underworld. In 1667 England, meanwhile, John Milton's Paradise Lost displays profound influence from Virgil's Aeneid. In a 1944 address, T.S. Eliot wrote, In the whole of European literature, there is no poet who can furnish the text for a more significant variety of discourse than Virgil. Our classic, 
the classic of all Europe, is Virgil. Thankfully, this complexity and universality survived by a fortuitous turn, and the Aeneid, despite Virgil's wish, was handed down to posterity and not burned to ashes. <laughs>